In this video, I'm going to show you an updated way of creating the typewriter effect inside of Adobe Premiere Pro. So let's get into it. So once you're inside of Adobe Premiere Pro, we're just going to begin by turning this black background into a white background. So we're just going to go ahead and create a new black video or a new color mat. So we'll go into new item and we can either select black video or we can select color mat. So I'm going to select color mat in this example. We'll press OK and we'll make this white. Press OK, press OK, and we'll drag this color mat onto our sequence. Alternatively, if you did want to do the black video option, then you can go new item, black video, OK. We'll drag that black video over onto our sequence. Then we'll go into effects, search for tint, drop tint onto that black video, and then we'll map the black to white. And you've got your white video there. Whichever option you take, they're both going to give you this white background. So I'm just going to delete the black video. I'm going to focus on this color mat and I'm just going to lock this layer. So press the padlock and now we can't affect this white background. Now from here, we need to go ahead and make our text. So I'm going to select this T icon, which is the type tool. The keyboard shortcut for that is T if you would rather just press T. Then we'll select anywhere up here and we'll just type out our word or our phrase. So I'm just going to do typewriter effect in Premiere. Now, at the moment, I can't see that because my font is white. So I'm just going to select that by going Command and A or Control and A if you're on Windows. Then we'll go over into Effect Controls, the graphics, we've got the text over here. So we'll open up this text. And as you can see, we can control the text here. So first of all, I'm going to change the fill color from white to black. Now we can actually see our text. Then I'm going to change the font. So at the moment it's set to Lucida Grande, but I'm going to go for something which looks a bit more typewriter. So you've got American typewriter, which works, or you could go for something a little bit different. So maybe this, I'm going to keep to this, but of course, just select the font that you want to use. We'll change the size of this. And then we can just center this up by using this button, this button, and then we'll go down to transform and we'll select the reset on the position. So that should be now in the center of the frame. And from here, as you can see, it is only five seconds long. So I'm just going to increase the duration of this to match the size of this white color mat. And there we go. We've got a 35, 34 second long typewriter text. Now from here, we just need to go ahead and we need to create our blinking cursor. So we'll go into our project and we can either use the black video that we created earlier or we can create a new color mat with a black color. So we'll go color mat, press OK and select black on this one. And you can drop that onto video layer two. And again, we'll extend the duration over to the right. Now we'll go up into effect controls, motion, and in scale, you can see there is 100 and then 100 is grayed out underneath. So we'll deselect uniform scale. And this means we can affect the scale height and the scale width independently to one another. So we'll go for around five on the scale height and maybe one on the scale width. Now, as you can see, that's definitely not right. That's not what we want this to look like. So I'm just going to increase the scale height to be roughly the same height as this text. Then I'm just going to make this thinner. So let's go for 0 0.3 or 4, 0.4. And then I'll just budge the position up and we'll move this over to the left of frame. There we go. So what we're going to do is we're just going to let that hold there for maybe four seconds. Then we'll create a new keyframe on the position. We'll move it over to the right, maybe four, five seconds. And we'll move this over to the end of the text. So if we play this back, you can see this is just going to animate from one side to another. Now that's a bit slow. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to decrease the gap here between these keyframes. So I'm just going to bring them closer together and that will make that slightly faster like this. There you go. That looks nice. Now from here, what we want to do is we want to crop this typewriter effect. So we could either crop this or we can do some masking. So if you're going for the crop method, and you can just search for effects, crop, drop that onto your text. And then at the start of this motion, you just want to go in to your crop effect. Now with this crop selected, we're just going to go to right and we're going to crop the right until this disappears. So it disappears at around 79. 
So we'll create a brand new keyframe on 79 there as this starts to move. And then we'll move to when this stops moving, which is here. And we'll pull the crop down until it reveals itself again. So there you go. That is 20% in this example. So let's see how that looks. Now, it's, it is animating, but the problem is it's just not in time with this line. It's just drifting out. So we can budge the keyframes up so that it's now following like this. Or if for some reason it's still doing this, it's still moving around too much. Then you can always just create a brand new keyframe where that's happening. And then we'll just move this back in time or forwards in time, depending on where you need this to go. So as you can see, it's perfectly in time there. And then it's perfectly in time here, although it's actually drifting out towards the end. And that's because it's still animating the crop when this has stopped. So we'll move that end keyframe over, play this back. And there you go. That looks great. Alternatively, though, if you didn't want to do the crop method, then you can always go ahead and just mask this. So with this text layer selected, we'll go down into video motion opacity. Now we'll select the free draw bezier and we'll just draw a mask around the text, making sure that these two side lines are straight. Then you want to find the point where that line stops animating, so it stops moving. There you go, it was here. We'll create a brand new keyframe on the mask path there, and then we'll move back to when this starts moving. So somewhere around here, there it is. Starts moving there, so we'll create a brand new keyframe there. And then we'll move this mask over to the beginning to meet this line. Now we'll play this back. And that's doing exactly what it needs to. Again, feel free to move this around if you feel like you need this to catch up with the text or if it's in front of the text, then just adjust that accordingly. But once you've done that, you can now just go ahead and create the blinking effect on this line. So in order to do that, we're first just going to nest the color mat. So we'll right click, select nest, and we'll call this cursor. Then we'll just go back to the very beginning. We'll go maybe four frames to the right, make a cut there. So press C on the keyboard to load the razor tool and make a cut. Four frames over again, make a cut, and then we'll delete that middle part. Let's see how that looks. There you go, that looks cool. So you could just keep repeating this process over and over again, but the problem is if you've got a long video, then this might take a while to get done. As you can see, it looked great, but again, this is gonna take a while because I've got a 35 second clip here. So instead we'll delete that effect. We'll go into effects and we'll search for strobe. There you go, stylize strobe light. We'll drop the strobe light onto the cursor pre-comp. So with the strobe light effect now applied to our footage, let's see how that looks. That's looking great. Although at the moment you could argue that that is a little bit slow. So what we're going to do is we're just going to pull the strobe duration in seconds down to 0.3 and then we'll pull the strobe period seconds down to 0.5 maybe. Let's see how that looks. There you go. That's a lot better. Of course, you can always change these values as well to change the look of this. So we'll go 0.3 and 0.3. Let's see how that looks. That's holding on to that a little bit too long. So we'll go 0.6 instead. Let's see how that looks. That looks good as well. Now there you go, that is the typewriter effect now complete. But if you wanted to change the speed of this, then all you would have to do is just go back into your text. You've got this keyframe here, so you can move these keyframes closer together. And then we'll go into our pre-comp and we'll move these keyframes closer together as well. So when we go back to our main comp, you just wanna go in to your text layer and just adjust these keyframes so that they're matching. So around there, there you go. That looks really cool. But you can also see when this cursor disappears, there's a little bit of blurring here, a little bit of softness on the edge. And that's because the mask feather on this mask is at 10%. So we'll go into opacity, mask one, mask feather, and pull that down to zero to create that hard edge. And when we play this back, you can see we've got this really awesome typewriter effect now in Adobe Premiere Pro. This is probably the way that I would do this method now. I used to animate the opacity, but the problem is you had a fading effect rather than a blinking effect. So this is the method that I would use if I was creating the typewriter effect for one of my projects. But there you go. Thank you ever so much for watching this video. I really do appreciate your support and hopefully I will see you on the next video. See you there.